I had this off and on series of 0% wooden guitars. I've got two in it so far, and I had this idea for a third. Didn't come out as good as I wanted it to, but it came out and it works. Come along on this horrible journey with me as I build this. Yes, today we're passing over my stash of closet doors to use uh, some of the acrylic I have in my stash from the acrylic drops I've gotten from a couple different local sign companies. Uh, a lot of these guys put these pieces aside for me. And then some other pieces of acrylic I have left over from earlier 0% wood builds and acrylic. It's all reclaimed except for that last sheet was one that I actually had bought. Starting with the fingerboard, I have a piece of quarter inch that I etched out the shape and uh, fret markers of the fingerboard on my thunder laser. I did some inlays and I cut the profile and then I just put those thin lines there where the frets will go. Um, so I figured what the best thing to do would be to sort of saw into it and then set the frets. But because it's plastic and not wood, it doesn't give. And I realized pretty quickly that that was not going to work. And what I had to actually do was melt the frets into the acrylic. Saving you some of the painstaking journey, we'll cut to the last two uh, frets that I put in. And what I was doing was using this uh, wood burning kit with the tip removed to just heat up the fret and slowly and methodically push it into the acrylic, uh, trying to keep it aligned with the line that I had scored and not burn my fingers. And um, it was uh, it was hard. <laughs> it was a lot of work. And it's also, it was really easy to melt it too much and then have the fret sink in too low. So it was... Uh, it was, it was a real nightmare, just like everything about this build. And I'm not speeding up the film here. I'm letting it run in real time for just one fret so you can get an idea of what all 20 of them were like. And again, this is one of the last two. So this is, by the time I figured out how to do it, you should have seen how horrible it was doing the first 10. <laughs> I would not wish this process on my worst enemy, but I'm uh, glad that I was able to figure it out and do it and have it come out and be successful. And, uh, you know, next time would, of course, be easier. Now, this is a piece of inch and a quarter acrylic left over from my first 0% wood base, the fretless one with the aluminum fingerboard. I'd gotten this from Paul Jackman, who had gotten it from a reclaimed place in Washington, D.C., and legend has it this was used as bulletproof glass on a TV show that was filmed down there. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, you know, Big, thick, heavy stuff, and I thought that would be perfect for cutting out my neck block and tail block. I didn't want to suck all that plastic up into my dust collection because uh, I try to keep it just wood in there so I can compost it. That's why I let this mess form. I have a little bit of experience with this uh, acrylic glue. It's like a thin, like, water consistency, and it does a chemical bond between acrylic. I'd use this when I was making the original version of the Square X, and um, it... It's amazing because once it actually cures, it's like chemically bonded and you, you can't break these pieces apart. On my first acrylic base, I really kind of messed it up with the flame polishing. you got to be careful doing it, but those pieces are thick enough that I wasn't too worried. And here you see, this is some reclaimed acrylic I got from a local cable sports network. It was a desk that they had, and um, they changed their set and got rid of this desk. And I made several guitars out of it. I'm now almost officially all out of it, but I used one of these cutoffs from the, one of the guitars that I made to make the neck. So this is only one inch thick, and it had some flaws in it, like a bolt hole and a cut. And uh, stuff. So I just use some total boat epoxy to fill these cracks in and make my blank solid before cutting out my guitar neck. When repairing flaws or defects, I prescribe to the sort of like Japanese uh, theory of kintsugi, um, where they use gold and they fill the cracks with gold. It's kind of like that. I figure, why try to hide it? I just try to make that flaw uh, or defect an, an accent point. It comes in hand in hand with the reclaimed woodworking that I do. Machining acrylic is a little bit different than cutting wood, and I'm still not really an expert at it. I've only done it a few times, but I was pretty pleased with the results that I got on this one. I think, uh, you know, I get better every time. Uh, and I also, very early on in the project, I said, I'm not going to obsess about this, or I'm not going to try to make it crystal clear. I'm just going to cut it and, uh, and work with it and, and do the best I can. And so that helped sort of ease my mind a little.
So at this point, I'm still pretty excited and gung-ho about the project, even though the fingerboard was a real hassle, which I, I kind of expected. Uh, everything else here was really coming together, and I was getting, getting pretty excited about it. I was thinking, hey, this, this might work. <laughs> That one crack coincides with one of the tuning pegs, which is uh, you know, a little bit of a structural issue, but in the end it all worked out fine. So that, that epoxy doesn't like make it solid again, you know. And I used a little total boat four minute epoxy, it's one minute faster, <laughs> to uh, to get my, my truss rod to stay in there. I do this same design on the wooden acoustic guitars where I have these threaded inserts that are put through the top side, so as you tighten it it pulls down. Um, I, th I think that's better than screws for this particular instrument and with the acrylic it was really almost a necessity. I used my DIY go board to glue the fingerboard down with that weld on acrylic glue and uh, I noticed um, after I was done what I should have done is created a cradle or used a cradle underneath the neck because I'm pushing down so hard in the center with the go deck that the neck is starting to kind of curve down a little bit and I don't want the I don't want the acrylic to form that way with the bow but Later on, I was able to straighten it out, and the, the truss rod actually works fine. Um, it works really well. It's more responsive than a, a wooden guitarist truss rod, so it became a non-issue. It went right back to flat after I uh, took it out of the, out of the glue up. And then um, I just used a little bit of black CA glue and drilled some holes to mark some side position markers. And again, after doing the fret job and starting to clean up the neck, I told myself not to obsess about it, not to make it perfectly clear. So I just sanded it down to make it look pretty good. And I very carefully flame polished it, trying not to warp the plastic like I did on the first acrylic base that I made um, to give it a little bit of shine, but it's more frosted. Now onto the top and back here, I actually did buy some new acrylic from a local box store to make these parts. I think I used the 0.08 inch thick acrylic, so it's like really thin and fragile. Um, and because, you know, all my cutoffs that I get from uh, sign companies and from my own work are just too small to get that wide of a surface. But now back to the cutoffs, this is again some, some scrap acrylic that was uh, from the trash pile of a local sign shop. And uh, at first I went and I, I was cutting these braces by hand on the table saw and the, the edges get a little rough and and I was and I realized like why am I working so hard I have a laser I can just cut all these pieces out on the laser so while well, the first three pieces I did on the bottom by hand uh, I switched to the laser to make all the bracing for the top that's a little more complicated and I also couldn't use my go bars because these pieces were too thin so I just had to sort of weight them down and try to disperse the weight as evenly as possible to get that acrylic glue to bond it worked okay. I had a few spots that I had to go in and, and fix, but here you can see this this one actually worked really well. But yeah, designing and cutting the braces on the laser were much cleaner and faster, and so that was how I went and I put together the top that way, uh, also adding a little reinforcement plate there in the middle. Uh, but those strips that I had cut earlier to make bracing from came in handy because I wanted to do a kerfing around the sides when we get to that part of the build, so that all got used still. And, uh, here again, I'm still feeling pretty positive and excited and happy about this build, but <laughs> it's these sides where, where things started feeling a little harder. First off, I, I knew it was going to be a hassle to do, but also it's winter here in Connecticut where I live, and uh, my workshop never really gets up to above 60 degrees this time of year, and so I'm trying to heat and soften this acrylic in a, in a room that is actively fighting me. I realized by about this point that if I had done this in the summer, I probably would have had a much easier job. But uh, just using a heat gun like you a paint stripper, I was able to form these sides just carefully and with patience. I had to trim the acrylic to fit and then get my whole mold together. Um, and everything was working pretty good, but then I noticed when I came back the next day as the shop got cold and everything that uh, a bunch of cracks formed here and there in the sides, which uh, was really kind of bummed me out. And that's where I started to sort of get a little bit more down on the project. I also forgot that I needed to make my tail block and neck block a little bit thicker to get up to the full three inch thickness that I had for the sides. And so I just cut uh, this, this blue eco acrylic that I had left over from another sign shop uh, and, uh, and used that to get my thickness. I didn't have everything clear that was going to work easily. 
So here are those strips that I cut on my table saw earlier and using the heat gun and the existing frame, I, I just sort of carefully heated and shaped those and you can see, maybe not in this shot, but you can start to see some of those cracks that formed as that plastic sat in, in uh, cold temperatures under tension. Um, you know, next time I know how to do it better. And I smoothed out the uh, the back surface and glued the back right to the body. And again, uh, I w like because everything's so weird, I just decided to keep it in the mold and use weight to glue this down. And um, that all worked all right. I did have a couple little spots that I had to go in and, and repair. I, with the top, I did as well. But uh, here you can see that you know now, without taking it out of the mold, I cleaned that up so I could slide it through the mold and put the top on. I was really just concerned with this thing all coming apart, and I wanted to get it as glued together as possible before releasing it from this mold, you know. And now that it's out of the mold, you can start seeing some of these this cracks and stuff that formed in the sides. Most of it isn't all the way through. A couple of them were. Uh, and that really bummed me out and started to sort of turn me off to the project because I did not want to do it again. <laughs> and I didn't have any more uh, acrylic without, like, buying something to do that. So uh, I just decided to continue as planned. I prepped and glued the top on the proper way, trying to be careful to not... Uh, have that glue run and drip anywhere because now I'm starting to notice that, that glue itself will leave spots where it dries which I'm not sure if I can get off and uh, so I went through and did all this like the proper way with improper materials and and um, when had a few spots to repair and, and every time I would see like a drip of that well done like run down somewhere because it's so thin I would just like get more and more bummed out like oh that's gonna be another spot or that's gonna be ugly and like those crack repairs and so even though overall when you look at the instrument like it still still really works like me being the builder like all I see are these flaws on the sides uh, and then yeah I just use epoxy again to seam up um, the spots where the the two uh, bent sides meet instead of you know patching it and uh, it was time to start putting the thing together and seeing if it was actually going to work Now it was time to uh, line my neck up, see if everything stayed in line, figure out where I was going to put my um, bridge, and uh, not to make it just another commercial for squaretools.com, but I love my square tool center finder. This is a tool I invented for just doing this kind of layout you just saw me using there. It really comes in handy. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised that by the time I did all my math and checked it all out, it looked like everything was going to line up pretty much properly. So now when I put my bridges on, I like to use uh, fasteners as well as glue. In, in this case, I'm using, of course, the acrylic glue. Uh, I put my fasteners in, and I feel like that makes a, a stronger bond. And I know my buddy Crash doesn't like the look of them, but I do, so <laughs> I'm leaving them there. This is stuff like this that drives me nuts. It's like these little spots from the glue, and I just I can't really, I can't really do anything about that. so hard to and every time I start messing around trying to get it I make something worse I use Corian cutoffs from the 0% wood base number two to make my bridge and nut and uh, this is the point where I was really starting to get a little frustrated with this project because I, I would go and do something and then I would see another crack or like something would come loose and I would have to get more of that well done glue in there and then uh, then that would drip and I'd have another spot uh, it was getting really frustrating, and I was like, let me just get some strings on this darn thing, wrap it up, take a picture, and call it a day. Um, and that's where we are now. Normally I wouldn't film this sort of messy tune-up setup part, um, because it's boring, like I'm setting the action, but this is the first time I'm getting it up to tension. I've got the truss rod on because it was necessary, and it's making sound, and I wanted to get all this on film in case it never works again. We got a buzz there I gotta take care of. <laughs> the truss rod's actually working. I can see the neck bowed up right here. Just a slight curve right there. <laughs> Sounds horrible. <laughs> Let's see if I can make it play good.
while the neck is holding up fine you can see the body starting to pull right there so I think I'm gonna stop with the steel strings go to nylon before I have it come apart on me there so I'm gonna pull the tension off right now so now with the tension Relax, it's already going back down to flat. Uh, it's just too much for this flexible plastic. So we'll see if the nylon strings will not pull as hard. If you didn't know that ball and nylon strings exist, now you do, and they're awesome. Okay, so now with the nylon strings, I'm still down a step. to loosen the truss rod because it's not pulling on the neck at all and it was all bowing up in the center so everything here is working great the only problem is this bridge and it is still pulling forward just a little bit under the tension of these strings so I might mess around this a little more but the simple solution is to put the strings uh, into a tailpiece so now the tension is pushing down on this block and, and it's pushing down the bridge. So instead of pulling up, we're pushing down. And, uh, and then the question is whether this will collapse under the weight, but with the bracing there, that should keep that from happening. And I don't know if I have any tail pieces floating around, um, but I'm gonna, I don't know. I mean, it, it's a wall hanger, right? Let's admit it, but I'd like it to not, I'd like to be a wall hanger under tension. <laughs> What if I drop this thing on here? Put the steel strings back on. I got two anchor points there holding on. These two these two screws are legit. Strings are coming through, pushing onto this brace, pushing onto there, pushing onto here. Let's see what else I got. Then I have this crappy, much less expensive tailpiece. That I could probably bend to work with my guitar shape. Maybe. Man, I might I might go with this dumb idea. <laughs> we'll have these holes here, but whatever. So if we drop this Bigsby on, we're definitely gonna have enough back pressure on the bridge because it's gonna come through here. So we'll have it pushing down here, pulling up here, pushing down here, but it's gonna put a lot of our string tension there. We're gonna have a lot of push right there but i think i think it'll handle and we're gonna have to we'll have these ugly holes here maybe we'll have to do something creative to make that look normal um maybe we'll plug it or somehow but i think i think i'm gonna try this oh, i'm taking the strings off again here we go but if i do this i can go back to steel strings The bridge spacing is a little bit wider on this than on an electric guitar, so I have to sort of split the difference, and we're going to have to just sort of... Yep, so that happened. Ugh, this guitar. I was afraid I'd wreck everything trying to get that drill bit out of the acrylic that broke off in there. And so I just had to change the angle on the tailpiece a little bit. No, a little tricky, but I got it to, to kind of look like it aligned all right. So the drill bit's still in there. And now it's time for the reveal. Six sound one.
This is a prototype, right? And I learned all these things. So if I were to ever do this again, which I guarantee you I will not, <laughs> but if I were to ever do this again, I could make it much better. I would solve all the problems I had putting the frets in. I'd solve the cracking problems um, by just basically working in a warmer time of year to start with. Uh, the design problems of having the bridge, and I, I design it like an arch top more maybe. Maybe we could actually make an arch top one and melt the, no, I'm not doing any more until I do something else. Thanks a lot for watching and be good.